Welcome, Commanders, to Starfleet Academy for Star Trek Fleet Command. I am your instructor, Captain Pike, and today we'll be doing an analysis of the Vidar Talios. The Vidar Talios was introduced into Star Trek Fleet Command in February 2023 with the Ark Assimilation Part 2. The VT is an epic G4 interceptor, and it is a second generation to the Vidar. It is a prototype anti-Borg ship developed by the Romulan Empire, but is not classified as a Romulan ship in game. The VT is a specialty ship, but it has more than one use. But it ultimately was designed to fight Borg hostiles, packing a huge increase to damage starting at 35,000%. There are requirements that you must meet in order to build the Vidar Talios, even though it's available free to play. A commander's eligibility to build the Vidar Talios is locked behind these items. You must have reached Ops 35 and build your level 35 shipyard. You must have built the Vidar and it must be at tier 9. Once you have hit these requirements, you will receive missions that will grant you the blueprints to be able to build the Vidar Talios. It will take 100 blueprints, will cost approximately 24.2 million Tritanium, 2.03 million Dilithium, 1,320 common gas, and 3,840 common refined crystals. The build time by default is 34 days and 12 hours. This can be reduced by research and other in-game utilities. Let's take a look at the composition of the Vidar Talios. Again, the Vidar Talios is an epic G4 interceptor. The VT's ship ability is Collective Severance. This increases the damage by a base of 35,000% against Borg hostiles. This actually increases as you level up your Talios. The VT has three offensive components. One phaser turret energy weapon with a one round charge and recharge, meaning it fires every round at one shot. Weakest of the weapons, but fires every round and has the highest critical chance. There are two rail guns. They are kinetic and they have different firing patterns. The first one's charge time is two rounds with the recharge of one round and then one shot per round. The second has a charge time of three rounds with three round recharge time and fires two shots. Leveraging stfc.space, we can look at the firing pattern of the Vidar Talios. As you can see here, over 15 rounds, this is what the firing pattern would look like. The Vidar Talios has three defensive components. There is the hull. This increases the hull health and armor and generates the lowest increase in strength for the ship. The impulse engines. This normally is the primary defensive component for interceptor and will net the most increase at each level. However, this is not the case on the Vidar Talios. The impulse engines on the VT are the second strongest component to upgrade each tier. Note the engines require transwarp coil. You heard correct, that's an impulse engine needing a transwarp coil. These transwarp coils are required at each tier and level lock your Vidar's progress. And finally there's the shields. This is where you will see the largest increase to the strength of your VT when it comes to defensive components. Normally, we would see explorers have the most gain, so it's a bit interesting to see this as the best improvement on the VT, which is an interceptor. Our last two components are the warp engines. And the cargo bay. The VT has a below the deck officer capacity of 7 and the crew will max out at a bonus of 500%. 
the VT packs a punch against armor as you can see here. And as expected in the defense part, its dodge, which is typical for an interceptor, is its highest. And as we expected from the power increase from the shield component, it has really good shield health too. Its cargo capacity is significantly higher than its uh, predecessor as well, giving you more room for probes or loot. As you can see here, the VT will go up to tier 12 and requires the same resources as your Vidar to upgrade. And it continues to scale from where your Vidar left off. On paper, the Talios looks better than a max T9 Vidar, but it really isn't. In performance, it will struggle to obtain meager gains in the hostile grind, but at a cost of full health of the ship. So you'll want to outweigh using it over your max Vidar for the first two to three tiers. We will do test runs of the VT against 33 probes and compare it to the performance of our max Vidar on the same 33 probes after we discuss crewing the Vidar Talios. Vidar Talios is going to benefit from the same crew you have been using on your Vidar. You will also find that you can use it the same way you've been using your Vidar. The VT should be able to easily step up to the diversity of these activities. I will be reviewing crewing for the following activities. Grinding probes, armadas, and aggressive resource acquisition, or OP hunting. We all struggle to find the right crew combination for the most efficient resource acquisition on our ships. For grinding Borg tactical probes with my Vidar Talios, the crew I find that works best for me is the Strange New World crew, consisting of Pike and the Captain's Seat, Una, and Uhura. At T1 in the first slot, I put Galinar. And as I opened up the second slot with T2, I placed Hugh below the deck. As I open additional slots, I'll be adding Strength to support Ahura. Strange New World Pike gives us his captain maneuver, prepared for anything. When fighting hostiles, increase shield mitigation by 4%. And his officer ability, Quick Thinking. When fighting hostiles, decrease hostile shield mitigation by 10%. This is at Ensign, and it goes up to 35% at Commander. With Ahura, we get her Officer ability, Preemptive Maneuvers. Strange New World Ahura increases Armor, Shield Deflection, and Dodge by 500% of total attack when attacking hostile battleships from an Interceptor. This is at Ensign, and it goes up to 1800% at Commander. Strange New World Ahura also provides full synergy to Strange New World Pike, increasing his captain's maneuver by 5%. Una brings her officer ability, Engine Redlining. Strange New World Una increases impulse speed by 15. This is at Ensign, and it goes up to 50 at Commander. She also provides full synergy to Pike, adding another 5% to his captain's maneuver. You can substitute in Hemmer or La'an instead of Una as well. I prefer Una because I actually find value in my impulse increase. But both of these alternates will provide full synergy to Strange New World Pike. Alternatively, we can run PMC, Pike, Morio, Chen, or PMT, Pike, Morio, Talon. Depending on how many rounds you're going against the probes, one or the other may work better for you. I personally prefer PMC over PMT. Below the decks on these alternate crews, I also run Hugh and Galinar. This alternate crew does not rely on support below the deck, so you can actually experiment with your other below the deck crews to get the best results from this configuration. Another crew that will work good on the Talios against Borg probes is Seven, Five, and Ahura. If you don't have Strange New World Ahura, you could substitute in Chen or Khan. Seven of Eleven as Captain will give us his Captain maneuver, Resistance is Futile. 
When fighting for tactical probes, 7-Eleven has a 20% chance of increasing the number of shots of each weapon by two. His officer ability, Strengthen the Unit Matrix. This ability, 7-Eleven, will increase the health of every officer on the ship by 60% at Ensign, and this goes up to 100% at Commander. 5-of-11 brings her officer ability, You Will Be Assimilated. This ability from 5 increases the amount of resources dropped from hostiles by 20% at Ensign and increases up to 100% at Commander. 5 also provides synergy to 7's Captain ability, increasing it by 35%. Ahura, as we discussed in our primary crew, will provide mitigation against the hostiles. If we have to go with Chen, she will reduce the incoming energy weapon damage. And if we alternatively use Khan, he will increase the critical chance. If you happen to have Hugh below the decks, this will stack on top of him. When thinking of crew, keep in mind the Borg tactical probes you will be hunting and their firing patterns. Probes 3, 3 and up, the firing pattern appears to be the same. You'll want to try and kill the probes before they reach round 10 in combat. This is when their big kinetic will fire. What about Talios and Armadas? The Vidar Talios does okay on the Borg Solo Armada. However, while it's at its first few tiers, I would still recommend running your Solo Armada fleet. But once you do a Borg Solo Armada, your VT will get a buff that lasts for one hour against the Expansion Cube Group Armadas. You will definitely want to use it against the Expansion Cubes. The Expansion Cube Armadas work just like your traditional Armadas. You'll need to coordinate with your Alliance to make sure that you have everybody buff though because they hit really hard without the BSA buff enabled on your Vidar Talios. Your standard Armada crew will work well on these Expansion Cubes. However, you'll want to have at least one of the attendees to be running some sort of hull breach. Tier 1 and Tier 2 Talioses with the BSA buff will do well against the 38 Expansion Cubes. Once you step up to the 48 Expansion Cubes, you're going to want to make sure that you're running Tier 3 or better Talioses against the Armada. My standard Armada crew is 5, 6, and Khan. 5's officer ability is Weaponry is Irrelevant. 5 of 11 increases the shield deflection armor, and dodge by 200% of the total health of the officers on the ship. This means you want to stack health below the decks, and you also want to try and leverage some synergy to really increase this mitigation. We will also get a 5 of 11's officer ability, you will be assimilated, which increases the amount of resources dropped from the armada. 6 of 11's officer ability, defenses are irrelevant. When attacking an armada target, every time the ship hits the opponent with a weapon attack, 6 of 11 increases the accuracy, armor piercing, and shield piercing of the ship by 5% of the total attack of all officers on the ship. This will go up to 40% at commander. Because this is dependent on officer attack, you'll need to make sure that you balance your officer's health below the deck as well as attack below the deck to benefit both 5 and 6. 6 of 11 will give a 400% synergy boost to 5 of 11. Khan's contribution to the group is his officer ability Savage Tenacity. Every time the ship is hit by a ship or defense platform weapon attack, Khan increases the critical hit chance by 1%. This is at Ensign and goes up to 5% at Commander. This is also cumulative, so it continues to stack. If you happen to be the Commander who's going to be running the whole Breach crew, you can swap out Khan for Lorca or Gorkin. But here we're going to cover Lorca. Lorca's officer ability is Quick Thinking. At the beginning of each round, Lorca has a 50% chance of dealing hull breach to the opponent's ship for two rounds at Ensign. When he is commander, this will increase to 80%. A good alternative crew for expansion cubes, if you don't have 5 and 6, 
would be Kirk, Spock, and Khan or Bones. Kirk's captain ability is leader. As long as the ship has morale, Kirk gives all officers on the ship a bonus of 40% to all their stats. At the beginning of each round, Kirk has a 50% chance of inspiring morale to the ship for two rounds. Spock will be using his officer ability, Illogical. While the ship has morale, Spock restores shield health to the amount equal to 25% of the defense of the officers on the ship. This goes up to 750% at Commander. So make sure you stack defense below the deck. Khan will bring his savage tenacity, which we've already explained. So let's talk about his alternative, Bones. Bones will use his officer ability, Excellent Medicine. Every time the ship gets hit by a weapons attack, McCoy increases the defense of all the officers on the bridge by 10% at Ensign. This goes up to 30% at Commander. Some commanders enjoy using their Vidar for aggressive resource acquisition or overprotected hunting. If you're one of those commanders, you're really going to enjoy using your Vidar Talios for the same activity. With the increased power and cargo, the VT is going to be better at OP hunting than your Vidar. You'll get to be the terror of territory space as well as get further into dark space as you tear it up. Your VT starts off at a warp range of 45, going all the way up to 150 base before research. If you've been using a Vidar for this type of activity heavily, you may already have crew that you prefer to run. Those crews should continue to work well on your Talios, but here's some crew I like to have fun with. It's all about the loot crew. 2 of 11 is Captain, 4 of 11 and Ston is Officers and Lawn below the deck. This setup will let your VT obtain the most loot on a single run. Ha ha, your Meridian is gonna die, crew. Many players out there like to beef up their Meridians for those Vidars hunting them. Put TOS Uhura as Captain for anti-crit and throw TOS Kirk on the side to boost her. Throw Honor Guard Wharf over there on the other side to increase your crit chance and then for fun put Badgie and Kira Nerees below the deck. And when we finally get that Badgie hailing frequency make sure you put that on your VT too as well. Do you have crew that you like to run on your Vidar or on your Vidar Talios? Or how about you have other activities you like to leverage your Vidar or Vidar Talios for? Feel free to share in the comments below. Also give us a like subscribe and share along with the construction of your vidar talios there's going to be changes to your borg tech refinery with the construction of your vt there'll be a reset of your borg tech when it comes to refining inert nanoprobes if you've had a max vidar for a while and have been working the borg tech a specific way you're going to feel a pinch of the charged nanoprobes as you need them to upgrade your vt if you're looking to maintain much of your prior pull pattern and upgrade the VT frequently, you should consider the Prime Charged Nanoprobe refining to double the refine of nanoprobes. This Prime will reduce the pressure you'll feel from your need of the charged nanoprobes for upgrades. Without this Prime, you're going to need to determine whether or not you want to make the pulls from the refinery or upgrade your Vidar Talios. You'll need to focus on one or the other or put yourself on a rotation cycle between the two. Pay attention when exchanging for your Borg Solo Armada directives as well. You'll now have two available poles, one for the Max Vidar and one for your tiered VT. You'll need to either do one or the other, but it's nice to know that you have the option of pulling both if you really need to grab that extra armada. There's been a new exchange card added for the expansion cube. This is to exchange the vinculum fragments you earn from defeating the expansion cubes. This is like a premium chest and you will need to participate in a lot of expansion cubes to get enough credits to do a chest pull. There is a single chest option and a premium option as well. Exchanging your vinculum gives you a chance for charged nanoprobes, active nanoprobes, Dezoc shards, Borg Queen shards, VSA directives, and Vidar Talios loot boost exos. 
these XOs are going to be very nice, but they feel very premium as well being dropped from this exchange. So use them wisely. In summary, out of the gates, I'm not overly impressed with Vidar Talios. It will probably get better as it gets higher in tiers, but as far as probe farming goes, at T2, it does an acceptable job against 33 and 37 Borg probes. On 36 and 37, it nearly squeaks past the Badar in total amount of loot, but it takes a full hull health to do it. The Badar Talios Loot Boost Exo is also harder to obtain, since they do not drop from the Borg Solo Armadas, they only drop from the Expansion Cube Exchange. Having these will be nice to offset the grind time and increase loot when you do get them. The VT will be your go-to ship for expansion cubes. Just make sure you run the BSAs and get her buffed first. Come visit us at our website and join us for further discussion on our Discord server linked in the video description. We hope we earned your thumbs up on the video and your subscription, and as always, we appreciate your sharing and comments. Live long and prosper, Commander. We hope to see you at Starfleet Academy.